Guys, I am so excited to be here. Although I can't see this section over here, and I can't see this section over here, and everybody back there is pretty much just as invisible to me right now as the rest of you. Uh, I can see like the first two rows, their faces. So hopefully you guys aren't sleeping back there. If you are, nudge your neighbor, punch them in the throat or something. Don't do that. Just kidding. Um, but this is super cool. This is a super cool opportunity for me because I just graduated college last year. Um, I've been working for a year um, as a resident pastor at Bethany Wesleyan Church. But the cool part is I grew up at this camp. Uh, I started coming here when I was, well, I came for a couple years when I was really young, when my dad first started out at Stroudsburg. Anybody from Stroudsburg? All right. Yep, I was a young lad back then. That was like fourth grade. Holy cow, it's a long time ago. Um, but I grew up 10th through 12th grade coming to this camp, and I remember, you know, being in the cabins. I remember pranking each other. It's awesome. But I never thought that I would be up on this stage and if you have a call on your life this week and you feel God calling you, talk to somebody about that. I want to encourage you because we need you. The church needs you. God needs you. The world needs you. And the cool thing is that one day you could be standing up here. This isn't some special platform for high and mighty holy people. I was in the same seats you guys were. Same problems. But God did something in my life and brought me here. And now I get to share with you guys, which is really cool. Hopefully I don't say anything too stupid. Bear with me. Sit up in your chairs, okay? Pay attention. Put your phones away. If I see it, oh, man, Lord help me. I might tackle somebody today. All right? But we're going to get into this. I'm not going to keep you too long uh, because my attention span is like four seconds flat and then I'm done. Um, anyways, as a kid... Okay, we're talking about walking in love in school, okay? What is that going to look like? And we're going to get there. But as a kid, I can remember being obsessed with comics and superheroes. Anybody else enjoy, like, Marvel, DC, you know? Let's be honest now, okay? I know I'm going to offend some people, and there are going to be a bunch of haters out there, okay? But Batman is not a real superhero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, he's, neither is Iron Man, just saying. They're rich and they have lots of money, okay? It's all about powers, okay? Anyways, I can remember watching movies and TV shows uh, of superheroes as I was going, growing up. And I can remember how, uh, I can remember thinking how awesome it would be to have superpowers. Anybody else wish they had superpowers? Oh man. That'd be awesome. Surprisingly, okay, you see me up here now. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I uh, probably smell a little weird. I probably got pit stains. I get nervous when I get in front of people. Um, but when I was younger, I was actually pretty shy. Um, I would, like, crack jokes or whatever to try and, like, burst out of my bubble. I still do that now. But I still get super nervous. So bear with me. Love on me. That's what we're talking about, walking in love. But I was shy as a kid. And I never wanted attention from people when I did something good. And so being a superhero allowed me to do that. You can be a superhero and save the world. And then you can put your secret identity on and no one knows who you are. Except for like Lois Lane or whatever. I don't know. There's always one. There, there's one weakness in all superheroes and it's women. Okay? Just saying. Just saying. But you can hide your identity. You can hide your identity from the world after you're done saving them. And that's what I liked about it. But growing up, one of my favorite superhero shows, okay, and a lot of you are going to say, oh, they're not superheroes, okay, but they were superheroes to me, okay. But who here has ever heard of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Yeah. Yes. They are superheroes. Mike, where's Mike? Mike Eckhart, he's somewhere, he's, yeah, he's up there, yeah. That guy, he's a, he's a true fan, let me just tell you, okay? Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, all right? And let's be honest, let's be honest, the White Ranger is the best. Just saying, okay? Just saying. White Ranger's the best, he's the leader. Just so you know, good news, bad news. Good news, 
There's four seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on Netflix, okay? And they're coming out with a new movie in 2016. Bad news, there's still 18 seasons they need to get on Netflix, okay, to feed my addiction. Anyways, for Halloween one year, I can remember going back, and I tried having my mom find pictures of me dressed up in this, but for one year, I got a Power Ranger outfit. Oh, yeah, I was the White Ranger. Yup, Tommy, the best, the leader, okay? And so I wore that Power Ranger outfit with pride. I was a Power Ranger going to morphin' time, okay? Have Zordon calling on me. Awesome. Teleporting to headquarters or whatever the heck it's called, I forgot. But I can remember wearing my outfit around the house, dressed up as a Power Ranger. And I would fight the bad guys in my living room, which happened to be my mom's pillows. She didn't like that too much, okay? When you start tearing up your mom's pillows, it's not good. It's not good. You get grounded. Um, but I was the best Power Ranger ever. I could have been on the TV show. But one day, okay, my world came to a shattering halt. This is very dramatic for me. And if I get emotional, bear with me, okay? One day... I was playing with my cousin Josh. Josh is a year younger than me. We always fight and stuff. Um, we were really close. But one day he came over, just like any other day, and we were playing. So we were playing good guys, bad guys, and I was a good guy. I was the White Ranger. And so as we're playing, I'm bossing him around. I'm telling him what to do because I'm the leader. I tell him when he goes to jail or when I defeated him, whatever the case would be that day, because I was the boss, I was the leader. And so one day, he got so mad, he turns to me, and he said something that crumbled all my hopes and dreams, okay? He, my cousin Josh turns to me with almost tears in his eyes, and he goes, you know what, you're not even a real Power Ranger. You're mean. Power Rangers aren't mean. I was devastated! I ran out of the room, went to my mom, told on him. I, I don't even know what I, he, I made something up. I don't know, I told her that he punched me in the throat or something, I don't know. <laughs> I was devastated because all up until that point, I was the White Ranger and I had everything going for me. I defeated all of Zed's Bad guys and Dr. Ooze, whatever his name is. Ivan Ooze, that's who it is. Oh, yeah. Defeated all of them, okay? But now as I look back at this, this devastating, life-altering thing, which I questioned my life up to this point, okay? Just kidding. As I look back at it, I was just a kid in an outfit. I was just a a kid dressing up as a Power Ranger, obviously, duh, Peter. But I knew all the characters, I knew all the different fighting moves, pulling them off was a different story, trying to do a backflip isn't that easy. Um, I would try it, but I'd probably break my neck and me and Brandon would be going to the hospital. Um, and Greg doesn't want to go yet. Um, but I was just a normal kid in a costume trying to be someone who I wasn't. I was being a poser. How many of you guys have heard that word, a poser? Okay, let's be honest. Who here does not like posers? No one likes a poser. No one likes a hypocrite, all right? Hypocrite is a fancy word for poser, basically, okay? But I wonder, okay, don't answer this, okay? Don't look at your buddy across the room that you know is a poser or whatever. But I wonder how many of us do this every day, and we don't even realize it. It's so easy to walk around our school hallways and put on a mask or to wear a costume. We go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, and then we come here for a week in the summer. And then once we get home and we get into school, we start just slandering people, cutting them down, 
bullying, disrespecting, looking at guys and girls the wrong way, using degrading words, right, off, right as we get off the bus. We're all called to put on the face of God. But how? We're all called to walk in love, in his love, in God's perfect love, in our hallways of our schools. But how do we do that? Before we do that, we need to figure out what love is. What does it look like? All right? So if you have your notes, start jotting down because it's good stuff. This will preach. All right? It's going to be good. You guys are going to like this because it's going to help you get through school better. You'll get straight A's. You'll have all the friends in the world. You'll be the coolest person in school. Exactly. You're not. Just kidding. Anyways, let's define what walking in love looks like, all right? In the passage that Jordan read earlier, verse 1, we read that we are supposed to follow God's example. In other versions, the NASB uh, version of the Bible specifically, it says to imitate God. Be imitators of God. I like that phrasing a little bit better just because it sounds cooler. But to imitate God. How do we imitate God? What does it look like to follow God's example? We need to know who God is and what he looks like. How do we do that? You see this, this beautiful thing right here? I know, it's nice. It's not a doorstop. This is meant to be read. This is how you learn who God is. If you look over in 1 John chapter 4, you don't have to go there, I'll just read it for you real quick. But it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. God is love. This love that it says in the Bible is not the shallow type of love that we find in our schools and sometimes in our families or with our friends. It's not a selfish love that says, I need more of it. It's a love that gives. This world has taken that word and turned it from what it's supposed to be. Real love, throughout the Bible, is talked about as holy, just, and perfect, just as God is. And when we truly have a grasp of who God is and know him, we will have no choice but to love like he does. So, I know it's early Monday morning, okay? We're going to do a little math, okay? Not one plus one math, because I can do that, okay? But if we are imitators and followers of God, followers of God's example, and if God is the definition of what love is, okay? You following me? If we're imitators, okay, a plus B equals C. If we're, if we're supposed to follow God's example, if we follow his example and we imitate Christ, and if God is love, then we can be loved. Make sense? Pretend and say yes. If you don't understand, come see me after. I'll explain it deeper. You can't call yourself a follower of Christ. Hear me out now. Okay, those of you who say, oh, I have anger issues, I have this, I have that, I can't love people. You can't call yourself a follower of Christ, someone who imitates God. That is what a follower of Christ does, and go around with hate in your heart. Hate towards people. So how does this look in our schools? If we're following God's example and showing love to everyone, and when I say everyone, okay, this includes the people that bully you. This includes um, the, the boy that annoys you or the girl who's madly in love with you. She's got a little bit of psycho problems, okay? 
Yeah. Vince, I know you got psycho girls coming after you, man. Just say no. Say no, brother. It means loving the nerd that has snot running down his face. Okay, he's got it in his shirt. (laughs) Poindexter. Okay? It's loving the kid who doesn't have enough money to wear American Eagle or Hollister or whatever other high-end companies. I shop at Walmart, gosh. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Old Navy. (laughs) Okay, I think I'm pretty cool, maybe not. The kid who smokes, the kid who does drugs, the kid who drinks, we're supposed to love those people. We are called to love those people as Christ has loved us. And if you say you follow God and you follow Christ, and you gossip, and you bully, and you disrespect others, you're not showing God's love. In verses 3 and 4, we read that there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, any impurity or greed, as well as obscenity, foolish or silly talk, or coarse joking. Not saying don't have a good laugh with your buddies, or your ladies, or whatever you call them. Not saying that. But when it gets degrading to others, and you're not loving as Christ would love, that's what it's talking about. If we're doing these things, then we don't truly love like God loves. In his book, Jesus Swagger, okay, it's a real book, okay, by Jared Wilson. It's talking about Zacchaeus. We all know Zacchaeus as a short little guy, climbed a sycamore tree, see what the Lord had for him, okay, whatever that song goes. I haven't heard it in a long time. But Jesus showed love to Zacchaeus before he repented and before uh, he accepted Christ as he is. Zacchaeus was one of the worst of the worst people in his society, okay? And this is what uh, the writer of Jesus Swagger says. It's an amazing, it's amazing how a single act of love can transform someone from the inside out. Even in your life, one single act of love could be the tipping point to someone knowing the truth of Christ, so you don't withhold, so don't withhold that from anyone you come across. In the same way that Jesus was willing to show love to a man who most would say didn't deserve it. You and I should be willing to go to great lengths to show love to people all around the world. Whether you think you are qualified or not, Jesus will pave the way if you are simply willing. Sometimes your willingness to love those who need it will be the difference maker in whether or not people come to realize the love of Jesus really does exist. Throughout middle school and high school, um, I wasn't always the perfect Christian boy I was supposed to be. Didn't really do anything too dramatical or whatever, but just the way I talked and act wasn't always the best. I'm going to be straight with you guys. I'd sometimes try to straddle the line of, you know, where, how far can I go? Oh, Jesus said that's the line? Oh, can I go like that? Okay? Let me just say this now. It doesn't work out for you. Okay? It's not going to end well. Okay. Thankfully, because of the influence of an awesome church and of an awesome youth group and godly friends and awesome godly parents, um, I was able to stay on the right path that God had for me. Now, most of you know my dad, and uh, if you've been coming here a long time, Pastor Ed Torres, yeah, 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 he's kind of not that cool. Um, but I'm a PK. My dad's a pastor. I'm a pastor's kid, PK, Um, which for me, that made things a lot more difficult in school. Most of the friends that I had in school weren't church kids. Um, I actually hung out with a lot of really, really rough guys. Um, We went to concerts together. uh, We went out to eat together. um, But this was just a group of guys that just really had no intent on ever knowing anything about Jesus Christ. And I was friends with them. I'd sit with them at lunch, and I would just be Christ to them. I would show, excuse me, I would show them love in my actions, in my words, and everything that I, w- I could possibly do. I can remember when I was in high school, when I got older, I used to go to the parties with them, okay? You know what I'm talking about, okay? But I would go to these parties, not to drink, not to smoke or do whatever the, the garbage they were doing, 
okay? But I would go first to make sure that my friends, the guys that I hung out with, were okay and that they had a safe ride home. And number two, I would just show everybody there that, one, you can have fun without that stupid crap. Can I say crap in here? If I can't, I'm sorry. Poop. Um, but you don't need that stuff. But that I can show God's love to them, even in a scenario, in their world. You don't have to come to church to be Christ or to meet Christ. I went into their world and showed love to them. It was probably about a year or so ago, me and my buddy Chris uh, reconnected. We went to a concert um, in New Jersey. Um, and so Chris was probably one of the most was what most people would say is the farthest thing from Christ. Um, you know those kids in your schools that just, they have that bad reputation about them. And you just don't think of anything about Christ when you see them. And this was what most people thought of Chris. But we remained good friends throughout the years. And on our way home from this concert, we started just talking. Just the two of us. And then out of nowhere, he turns to me and he says this. I know you believe in God. He, he, him and all my friends knew I was a pastor's kid, knew I went to church, knew I read the Bible. I know you believe in God and all that church stuff. And our views on religion and, uh, and on God are completely opposite. But all those times that you would come to the parties and you would drive me home, and that you would just look out for me and everybody else, I want to thank you for being my friend and looking out for me despite our differences. I've never been shown that kind of love before. This is a kid I went to high school with. This kid smoked a pack a day, did whatever garbage is out there this kid never saw the love of Christ other than me just being his friend it took a lot for him to say that he didn't break down he didn't give his life to Christ right there he saw the love of Christ through my life just because I was walking and following God's example I was imitating God's example. And when we come in contact with God's love, when others come in contact with God's love, there is no denying it. We don't always see the fruits of our labor, but I know at this point that Christ, or that Chris, sorry, saw what I worked so hard to just show him and every other person that I came in contact in school, and that's God's love. And what I want to tell you is to just show them love. Show them the love of Christ. There are so many hurting kids in schools. This world is going down the poop chute fast. They need God's love, and that starts with you guys, each and every one of you. They need to see it. And if it starts with our group of what, 300 teens here? If it multiplies in a year, then it keeps multiplying. We could cover this earth in only a matter of a couple years. I was just real and true to who God created me to be and show love through my words and actions. I didn't condemn them for drinking or judge them for smoking or tell them they were going to hell because they were using drugs. I didn't do that. I showed them love. So I know many of you just got out of school probably a week or two ago. I know school is still far off. You don't even want to think about it. I know. But as we go to our small groups in just a moment, think about how you've been doing in the past with showing God's love in your schools. If you're homeschooled, or cyber schooled? Are you showing love to your parents? Even to the other kids in your cyber classroom? I'm not sure how all that stuff works, but 
find a way. You can show love. And this goes beyond school, okay? This isn't just in school that you love people. This is everywhere, but we're talking specifically about school. Come up with ways that you can better show God's love in this year and the years to come to people who are in your schools. Are you showing love as Christ did? In your small groups, I want you to really discuss how you can better love people in your school. What's holding you back from, from loving them? Do you have to deal with an issue? And what needs to change? Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for these teens. I pray that they would be a mighty force in their schools, God, in the battlegrounds, God, as they go back in the coming months. God, I pray that their small group discussions would be um, on point and that they would be able to just uh, find ways to better love your children that you've created, God. Help us to all love better and help us to love you more. We ask these things in your name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Find your lead.